transition to internal power about T minus 20 minutes. Uh, they've given us a go for today's mission, tracking no issues. We are also launching from Kennedy Space Center. Uh, and so we are working with Kennedy Space Center team as well as the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Uh, they have cleared the area and secured it around Launch Pad 39A. They've also cleared the corridor uh, leading out of the pad downrange and given us a go for today's mission. Uh, looking at the weather, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blue sky, 65 degrees and sunny at Cape Canaveral, tracking no issues uh, at the moment for weather. Uh, so with all stations indicating go for launch, let's take a little closer look at today's payload. KoreaSat 5A is a communication satellite operated by KTSat. It's Korea, South Korea's sole satellite service provider. The satellite was manufactured by Talus Alenia Spas and located at 113 degrees east longitude. KoreaSat 5A will provide direct to home broadcast, broadband, and backhaul services with its KU band capacity. KoreaSat 5A provides KTSat with 12 KU band transponders of 36 megahertz and 24 KU band transponders of 54 megahertz. Now, as a replacement for KoreaSat 5, KoreaSat 5A will expand upon its coverage across Asia and the Middle East. And unlike other satellites in the KoreaSat fleet, KoreaSat 5A will provide maritime coverage of the Persian Gulf, Indian Ocean, South China Sea, and East China Sea. KoreaSat 5A is also equipped with four extended KU band steerable transponders of 54 megahertz each. These steerable transponders will provide commercial direct to home broadcasting services in the North Asia region by the end of this year. The KoreaSat 5A satellite arrived at SpaceX facilities in early October and has been undergoing preparations for its launch today. It weighs about 3,700 kilograms at launch and offers payload power of approximately six and a half kilowatts. You're seeing that satellite getting loaded into the shipping fixture on the screen right now. That was brought into an airplane, shipped to Cape Canaveral, and arrived at the space facilities just in that transfer crate you see right there. Now, Talos Alenia Spas is the prime car contractor for KoreaSat 5A in charge of its design, production, and testing, as well as the ground delivery. The company is also responsible for its launch campaign, the launch and early operations phase and in-orbit testing of KoreaSat 5A. Now today we are taking KoreaSat 5A to a geostationary transfer orbit. Uh, and on your screen we have a quick animation. You can see uh, the launch with first stage landing. That second stage has its first burn. After that burn we have a uh, spherical separation during it. We will coast for about 20 minutes. Then we're going to have a second stage, second burn. Uh, about T plus 35 minutes and 30 seconds we're going to have our payload deploy. Then KoreaSat 5A will use own onboard thrusters, put it in a final geostationary uh, orbit at about 36,000 kilometers away from Earth. Uh, you can see it's matching Earth's rotation. Uh, that's how it uh, actually covers a singular spot of Earth's sky, and in this region, instance, uh, that 113 degrees east latitude, longitude position. So we're about T minus four minutes and uh, 20 seconds in today's mission. Uh, as of right now, we're finishing up that LOX load on the first stage. Uh, no issues to report right now. Uh, the forward arms of the strong back have begun opening up. Uh, everything there is looking good to report. Uh, it will fully recline at liftoff. At T minus seven minutes, uh, we began the engine chill process of our first stages. Uh, that's where we actually are flowing in that liquid oxygen into the first stage engines. That kind of chills down all of the uh, all of the the metal components of the Merlin engines, uh, and so that way they don't actually flash into gaseous oxygen at liftoff. Uh, it protects the engines and gets it ready uh, for the actual ignition point. Coming up at the T-minus one minute mark, Falcon 9 is going to enter into startup. Uh, that's actually the moment where our ground computers are going to hand over the countdown process to Falcon 9. The onboard flight computer of Falcon 9 will take over the countdown at that point. It'll do its final uh, checkouts of all the sensors, uh, which will lead us up into liftoff at T minus zero mark. So, recapping where we're at right now, our payload is on an internal power, giving us go for today's launch. Our fairing boat is our, our uh, drone ship 
is out in the sea. 340 nautical miles. Go for today's launch. Our rocket, Falcon 9, go for today's launch. Topping off liquid oxygen right now. Weather is looking good. Range is good. So at about T minus three minutes, let's listen into these final few minutes of the countdown process. Stage one, stage one locks is uh, closed out for flight. And that countdown one confirmed TVC is nominal. Stage two TVC motion is nominal. Stillings will get, get the, give the launch count. Yeah. Stage two locks is closed off for flight. Vehicles in self line. Gas closed up to start. AFTS is ready for launch. Falcon 9 is in startup. Gas closeout's complete. Stage 2, pressing for flight. LD on countdown 1, we're go for launch. Stage one, pressing for flight. T minus 15 seconds, standby for terminal count. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Vehicle switching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Putting out over 1.7 million pounds of thrust. About five seconds ago, we transitioned uh, to the supersonic regime. Coming up in about a second, we're going to hit Vehicle max Q. Maximum dynamic pressure. We actually just passed through max Q. That's one of the highest stress states on the vehicle. Propulsion avionics continues to look nominal. And back engine shell has begun. You heard the call out the Merlin vacuum engine of our second stage has begun chilling in. 
Same process as the first stage, where we start to flow that liquid oxygen through that second stage engine. This first stage burn will last for about another 30 Recovery seconds. Recovery has AOS. In about 10 seconds, we'll have main engine cutoff. All nine Merlin engines at that first stage will shut down. About three seconds after that, we will see stage separation where the first and second stages will be separated by four pneumatic actuators, and then we will have the ignition of our second stage engine. Let's watch. We have you go. Stage separation confirmed. And we have a good ignition of the Merlin vacuum engine for our second stage. You can see the exhaust plumes uh, coming from the forward view of our first stage on the left screen camera. Uh, our grid fins have also deployed, as you can see there. We use those grid fins to guide ourselves back through Earth's atmosphere to our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. In about 15 seconds, we'll have separation of the fairing from our second stage. That's a view inside the fairing. KoreaSat 5A on the right side. Thank and we have separation of the fairing. It's a good separation. Second stage is following a normal trajectory. And we have a call out that second stage is following a nominal trajectory right now. Everything looking good. Meanwhile, first stage is continuing to guide itself down. We're coming up on entry burn at about the 6 minutes and 23 seconds for the entry burn. Now, in addition to using those grid fins for guiding ourselves back to the ship, we do have uh, cold nitrogen thrusters. Uh, that's those white puffs of smoke you see coming on the screen uh, on the first stage image. Uh, we also use that to help uh, orient the stage back to the drone ship. Our second stage burn is going to last till about T plus 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Then that second stage engine will shut down. We'll be coasting for about 20 minutes. Uh, and then we will have our second burn to put KoreaSat 5A into the final geostationary transfer orbit. Entry burn coming up in about a minute for the stage one. Uh, it passed through its apogee of about 110 kilometers. So now we are accelerating back to Earth. We use that entry burn to negate a lot of the, the vertical velocity that the rocket has built up uh, and help slow down the, the entry speeds. I'll see a more gentler touchdown. Entry burn will be about a 20 second entry burn. Uh, we're using a combination of one and three engines, depending on different timing and sequences of this burn. Today, there is only two burns since we are landing on the drone ship. We're not going back to uh, Cape Canaveral. So we just have the entry burn followed by the landing burn at about eight minutes and six seconds. Drone ship AOS. Stage one, AFTS has saved. Stage one, entry burn has started. Confirmation of entry burn start, 20 second burn. Stage two continues to follow a normal trajectory.
stage while an entry burn is shut down. And we have shut down of the entry burn. Expected loss of signal, Cape Canaveral. We'll have our landing burn in just about a minute of stage one. Single engine landing burn. Now we may lose signal, as you saw there briefly the stage one. Uh, we are getting the feed from a satellite in the drone ship uh, with that tropical storm moving uh, through the area. There were some choppier seas, which makes our satellite link a little bit uh, more challenging, but we will provide you guys updates as we have them. Meanwhile, you're looking at a live view of stage, stage one two. is transonic. Um, the call out for stage one passing through transonic regime just came. Trajectory continues to look good for this second burn, or first burn of the second stage, which will have cut off at about 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Stage 1 landing burn has started. The landing burn for stage 1 has begun. A 30 second landing burn. It's a live view from, of course, I still love you, our drone ship out in the Atlantic Ocean. And we have some. We do have confirmation while we're waiting for uh, an image from the drone ship that we did have our second stage engine cut off. But if you've tuned into past and webcasts, uh, you've noticed that we have uh, lost feeds uh, in the past of our stage one. Right now, we don't exactly know the state of stage one. Uh, but as of this moment, uh, it does look good like we are in a good parking orbit for stage two. This is recovery. Stage one has landed. Recovery operators moving to section eight. And we have confirmation from recovery operators that stage one has landed. Stage one has landed. We don't have any images and footage to share with you. Oh, there's an image right now. A little toasty, but his stage one is uh, certainly still intact on the drone ship. Our second stage is in a good parking orbit right now. Uh, so what we're actually going to do is leave you this animation of stage two. Uh, so that way uh, you can keep tracking its progress. At about T plus 26 minutes, we'll be back to cover uh, the second burn of our second stage to put it into a geostationary transfer orbit. So we'll be pausing right now and we'll see you back here at T plus 26 minutes.